few years, I've been lucky enough to experience some of the most beautiful places that I never would have thought were even in Japan. And I've been wondering for a while now how I'm going to be able to take this to the next level this year, which is what brings me here today to show you my brand new Jeep. Uh, it's not, actually, it's not brand new, it's a second hand, it's brand new to me. This is a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited 2017 Sport Edition. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my plans for the Jeep and plans for the channel moving forward, as well as how I bought this Jeep in Japan, because like many things in Japan, uh, it wasn't as easy as it might think it's gonna be. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Starting with the first question, why a Jeep? I think like a lot of people from a couple of years ago, I was very into uh, the idea of van life and living on the road and being like a digital nomad. And I actually got to try it out for a bit when I was in the United States. I rented two different kinds of vans and I gotta be honest, I don't think it was for me. Uh, <laughs> like it was really fun and I loved the idea of being able to just travel around to each place and just figure out where you're gonna stay like on a whim, like, oh, this is nice, let's just stay here. Rather than booking accommodation ahead of time it doesn't really suit me as a person. Um, but to be honest, I, I felt really cramped in the space. I didn't feel like I could ever really feel comfortable trying to live in such a small space. I always just wanted to be outside of the vehicle. I found it really stressful trying to keep it clean on the inside and all that thing. I just didn't, wasn't for me. But I still really felt the desire desire to be free and independent and not have to plan things and just drive around and see what there is to see. So when Chris and I went on a trip, it was around this time last year, uh, we went with a company called Overland Japan based in Tokyo and they have vehicles set up with rooftop tents on the top and camping gear all set out the back and camping gear all set out the back and it was the most fun three-day trip we'd been on in so long and I really loved the idea of the rooftop tent and I went into it completely blind and I ended up having the best time ever and it was from that trip onwards that I realized this is the lifestyle that really suits me and it really suits Chris as well. From that trip onwards we'd already started planning out how we can make this for ourselves and without even asking without even really even putting it out into the universe uh, the company James Baroud which is the rooftop tent that we used on the Overland Japan car James Baroud reached out to me they just sent me an email and they said we really love your videos if you're looking to do this thing more in the future we'd be happy to send you um, a rooftop tent my mind was blown and I immediately started <laughs> writing down ideas and things that I wanted to do until eventually I came to the idea of buying my own car that I can set up like an overland vehicle to travel around Japan with. I had tossed around ideas of different kinds of cars. I'm like, I'm in Japan, I should get a Toyota. Um, and I liked the FJ Cruises for a bit and then I didn't. And then I thought about getting a Jimny and then I was like, it's too small, I need something that's bigger. Basically for all of the things that I want to be able to do with this car now and five, 10 years in the future, however long I can keep this up, the Jeep Wrangler ticked all of the boxes um, of things that I wanted. So like I said, James Brown is gonna be sending me a rooftop tent that we can install on the top. And I'm going to be building out the entire back of the car with camping gear and pull out drawers and you know a cooking stove and a fridge and all of these things that's gonna allow me to basically just get in the car and go wherever I want to go within Japan and continue to make videos and experience and explore all of these different places in Japan that I have never had the chance to experience before. I think because I live in Osaka, I've, I've seen a lot of places that you can get to within you know a couple of hours from Osaka, but there's just so much in Japan, so many large chunks of land in Japan that I haven't had the chance to experience yet. And I think with the Jeep and with me now being a full-time creator, I will actually get to have that opportunity this year. And I am so, so so freaking excited and I really hope that you are also excited as well. So now moving on to how I actually went about buying this car secondhand in Japan. There's a number of ways that you can do this. Um, the most obvious way is by going through a secondhand car dealership. This is a great way, you know, to make sure that the car is in good condition and you know that everything works all right. But the problem is that it'll, the price will generally be a little bit higher than it would be from when the car salesperson bought it from the original owner. That's a bit confusing. Basically, the dealership will put their own fees on top of it and they just kind of, you know, they need to make a profit somehow, so that's how they'll do it. But where the car dealerships get it from is from these online auctions that happen in Japan all over the country. And it's kind of crazy. It blew my mind a little bit when I when I discovered it. It's usually pretty difficult to be able to access the auctions online. Um, Everything is in Japanese, obviously. And it's usually only car dealerships and people that are importing, and sorry, exporting cars out of Japan will go to the auctions because this is where the cars will be sold at their absolute 
absolute cheapest. So in order to access the auctions, I used a company called Get Cars Japan. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them. This is just the way that I, the method that I use. And they have an online portal that allows you to log in. You have to make a little deposit first. It's refundable if you don't end up buying anything, but you make a deposit and then you're able to access all of the auctions. And then on there, it would have all of the cars listed. Once you click on it, you can see a couple of photos of the car, just a couple, not too many, and they're not great resolution either. <laughs> but you'll also get um, a, a sheet of information that'll tell you all of the information about the car, like the car make, the type, uh, how many Ks it's got, the condition that it is on the outside and on the, on the inside. So, you know, if there's scratches on the outside or scuffs or whatever on the inside or pet hair or whatever, um, that will be listed on the sheet there. And it also has in other details, like if there's any aftermarket things that have been added to the vehicle, um, you know, anything, anything really that is of note will be written down in this information. So Get Cars Japan allows you to access all of these auctions and then you can place your own bid on it. And then they, then the Get Cars Japan website, they will bid for you. Uh, Chris and I actually got to go and check out one of the auction sites in person and it was really crazy. There was this huge auditorium filled with hundreds of computer screens and people sitting there just waiting for cars to pop up on these screens in front of them and it will be like bing start and then people just start bidding on the car until a few seconds later it's sold like it happens so quickly uh, and it was really crazy it was very very interesting to go and see in person but yeah I was only able to see that because of Gate Cars Japan you know we called them up and said if we can go and have a look and they allowed us to. The only downside that you'll get with using Get Cars Japan or probably similar companies have the same kind of rules uh, is that they'll take a 7% commission on cars over 1 million yen and a 5% commission on cars under 1 million yen. So it depends on the car that you're gonna buy. It depends on how cheap you think you can get it on the site. Um, it might end up being cheaper actually just going to a secondhand car dealership because with the commission and the costs of the car that's at the secondhand dealership, it might end up being cheaper at the secondhand dealership than it is to actually just buy it from the auction itself. I had bid on one Jeep before this one and it didn't go through. It sold for like, you know, $300 more than my bid, which was really annoying, but, um, ended up all being okay because a couple of weeks later when I was in Tokyo for a completely different reason maybe it's in like a past video I've already made it and I just like randomly bid on this is only the second the second Jeep that I've ever bid on and it was one that has 29,000 Ks it's white it ticks all the boxes and it's got a nice a really cool bumper on it really good quality and everything and I was like I'll just put like a low bid on it and I want it I'm like shaking <laughs> we got it we got the car! I was hoping to spend like 3.5 million and so I only bid 3.34 and I was like, ah, this one's got pretty low kilometers. I think it's gonna go for much more. So I absolutely didn't think that it was gonna go through and I won. It, I won, bought it for 3.3 million. I want a cab! I want a Jeep! I got the Jeep! I got the Jeep! I got the Jeep! So even though I kind of won this auction <laughs> accidentally, uh, I'm really, really glad that this is the Jeep that I won it with because it's in such good condition. I, it looks brand new. When I first saw it in person, I was like, wow, it looks great. Ah! There it is! Oh, it's so cool! Ooh. Ooh. So exciting to see it in person. I feel like even on like the information sheet about the Jeep when you go to buy it, it has like, you know, it said in the back like, oh, there's like a few like animal pet hairs because someone had like a dog or something like that, the previous owners. So I'm like expecting to see heaps of pet hairs, but there's like, I don't know, I can see like three. <laughs> Nothing I can't vacuum, but like they, they write down every tiny little infraction, but it feels like it's brand new. Still kind of smells a bit like it as well. So pretty. 28,381 kilometers. Not bad. It's got almost no scratches on the outside and there's just a couple of little scratches on the inside of the car, but I don't really care about that too much. Look at all of the times that people have like tried to put the key in and then missed. Scratches so easily, that's crazy. And it also already has this really nice looking front bumper on the car already, which I probably would have paid for myself to have it put on in the end. So now that's one less thing that I have to pay for. Uh, the only downside is that this car didn't already have shaken, which brings me to my next point, the all dreaded shaken in Japan. <laughs> so shaken is kind of like 
a roadworthy certificate that every single car in Japan has to have for you to be able to drive it on the road. Uh, once it's done, it'll last for about three years, but after that, you'll need to get it every three years or so. It can end up being a little bit expensive, and sometimes if you've made a lot of modifications to the vehicle, uh, it won't pass the shark end test. So a lot of people see it as it's too much effort, and so they'll just sell the car and then buy a new one, which is why the secondhand car, what's it called? Industry? Secondhand car industry market is very popular in Japan. So when you buy a used car in Japan, there's a number of things that you have to pay for on top of Sharken, which include uh, the number plate registration fee, owner name change fee, mandatory parking space that has to be within two kilometers of your registered home address. So if your apartment or your house doesn't have parking, you need to rent a space at a parking garage, which is what we've done. You need liability insurance, car acquisition, car acquisition tax which is five percent of the purchase price and this is only paid once automobile tax which is paid once a year and weight tax based off the weight of the car and this is paid every time you get shark in so every three years or so and you also need to pay for a recycle fee which is paid up front for if the vehicle needs to be recycled for whatever reason down the track so that's seven things costing many many dollars many many yens that's not even accounting for all of the little like admin fees that a lot of places will take because is, you know, companies realize that an admin fee of $20 here or there to register a thing is, uh, it's just a drop in the bucket for the amount of money that you're paying for the vehicle itself. So there's a lot of little extra fees that just sprinkle in on top. Um, and that's great. <laughs> but I mean, it's fine. I, I'd already budgeted for these things in my head anyway. So um, I knew what I was getting myself into. Luckily, the mechanic that we chose was really great. And he kind of did like a lot for us. He did the whole shaken, like the, the roadworthy test and all of that. He made some improvements. He changed out the light bulbs and then changed them back again. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And he also changed the tires for us. So these are the new tires and new rims that we got. We got these like secondhand. I'll talk about that later, but. And he also just washed the car, which is very nice. I think that might be standard. I'm looking at Chris. No, it's not standard. How nice of him. We washed the car for us. He gave us like a full rundown of how much it costs to do everything. This is the tax for the shaken. Shaken. <laughs> right. So this is tax for the car. Uh-huh. That's tax for the shaken. This is tax for the shaken. <laughs> this, this is going to be every year. Okay. And in total it came to 185,000 Japanese yen. A lot of money, but it's in the budget that I set in my head. So that's all we care about and everything's fine and it's totally drivable right now and I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't believe it's mine. <laughs> so as you can see, it's not a cheap process and it was very long and complicated and I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't have been able to get it done if it wasn't for Chris being able to speak Japanese and help me. Uh, or maybe I would have been able to get it done but it would have taken way longer and so much more stressful. It's becoming more and more clear to me why a lot of people in Japan just don't buy cars and don't end up getting their license at all. Because public transport is great and buying and owning a vehicle is very expensive. So the overall time it took from winning the auction to actually getting the car and being able to drive it on the road took two and a half weeks. And this is also assuming that you already have your license in Japan. <laughs> Good luck with that. That's like a whole nother mission. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no, it's another car. Don't make me move, please. I'm just gonna be that crazy guy Jing, sitting on the floor. People don't sit on the floor in Japan. I'm, I'm always one of the only people ever doing it. I get weird looks everywhere, it's fine. It's great, it's fun. Since buying the car, which has been like about a week and a half, two weeks now, uh, Chris and I have been researching and then purchasing and researching and purchasing so many things, uh, including these tires, the tires and the rims themselves. So the original tires were 18 inch and they're okay. The stock tires look fine, but just look so much cooler when they're different different wheels entirely. So we picked these up secondhand as well on a store called Up Garage. If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of secondhand purchases everywhere. Oh, motorcyclist, hello sir. Don't mind the gaijin, just sitting on the floor. Up Garage is a really great website for um, aftermarket items as well as like genuine items from your car. Uh, what's it called? the car, not the dealer, the maker from the car maker. So you can just type in Jeep Wrangler and it will show a bunch of items that are related to Jeep Wranglers. It's a great place to go for secondhand things, especially tires and wheels. So these ones are 17 inch. And I think overall it's just under 32 inch. These are slight 
slightly, slightly smaller than the stock tires, but because it's 17 inch instead of 18 inch, this part looks bigger, which makes them look cooler. And I'm a big fan of these tires. I think my friends are gonna give me shit for talking about cars like I know what I'm talking about. It's been a very steep learning curve this past month or so. I'm really happy with how these look. Um, and I think it was worth every penny. I think Chris and I have talked about it and I think we'll hold off getting, uh, getting a lift kit for the Jeep because uh, to be honest, uh, <laughs> the parking garage that we've chosen, we're really just gonna be scraping by once we get the rooftop tent on top. So I don't think that, we, we de there's definitely no room for a lift there. We, we will not make a lot of clearances in Japan if we get a lift. So we might wait until, I don't know, wherever we end up going next after Japan, we'll get a lift kit then. Um, and also in Japan, the, there isn't really any necess necessity for a lift kit because there isn't a whole lot of off-roading in Japan. But I'll find it, I'll find it somewhere. I'm sure it's there somewhere. And I also plan on getting a winch in the front so that I don't get stuck like I did last time. <laughs> We're getting some roof racks put on tomorrow. And by put on, I mean we are putting them on. That should be fun. And then of course, the James Burroud rooftop tent, which I'm so excited for and I'm really excited to show you what it's like and I can just gush about how much I love it because I'm excited. And then of course, as well, the back of the Jeep, we're going to build it out with the drawers and shelves and uh, like a pull-out cooking unit and a fridge and water and all of that and uh, yeah we've started the construction already I won't show you the back because it's extremely messy but uh, expect a video of the build coming up very very soon we have zero experience in making or building anything especially not in a vehicle so it's not going to be overly complicated it will be a very simple build we're putting our heart and soul into it <laughs> clearly I'm very excited about this purchase I I just love it so much and I am really looking forward to showing, showcasing more of the places in Japan that I haven't been able to show yet and a, a lifestyle that I think really fits me, really suits me and Chris a lot. Chris will be joining me sometimes, but since he still works, uh, he'll just be joining me on his weekends, but it's mostly just going to be my solo travel overlanding vehicle. And I'm so, so freaking excited and I hope that you're also really looking forward to the kind of content that will be coming out this year hopefully I'll be able to put out more videos because I will just be able to go out more and do things whereas all of the past two years I've only been able to travel on my weekends so um, yeah I just think that there's going to be a lot more going out and I'm really really looking forward to it I hope that you are excited for it as well so please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and let me know in the comments what do you think else I should do with the car like what I'm sure there's a lot of car people out there watching this video that are more car people than I am a car person. Are there any Jeep people? I'm sure you've got some uh, some interesting tips and advice and things that I haven't thought about already. Uh, we've, we've done a couple of little modifications. We've got like a little step there as well, which will help us get up into the tent, but I'm open to suggestions still. We haven't purchased everything yet, um, but yeah, that's it. I hope that you liked this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're excited for the year uh, as I am and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>